All right, welcome back to Rock the JVM. I'm Daniel, and in this video, I'm going to talk Scala 3, and in particular, I'm going to discuss some of the new stuff that Scala 3 will bring to traits, which are some of the core elements of the language. So this video will assume that you know some Scala fundamentals already, and in particular, Scala 2 fundamentals, because at the moment of this recording, Scala 3 hasn't even been released yet. And also, this video will assume that you have an IntelliJ IDEA version, uh, which is pretty recent, or an equivalent idea. IDE that has Scala 3 support, which at the moment of this recording is um, called Dotty. So uh, I'm going to work with IntelliJ version 2020.2, and I'm going to also show you how you can create a Dotty project. Now, as always, I'll recommend that you code with me in this video, and whenever you need to refresh your memory or just need to find the differences between Scala 2 and Scala 3 in what concerns traits, just refer back to this video or to its written form with the link in the description. All right, so let's get back to our code editor, and here I've created a small object into which I'm going to also create a main method just in case we need to uh, test anything. And in this video, I'm going to continue some of the previous explorations of Scala 3, which you can also find in the Rock the JVM channel. So here we'll discuss some of the new functionality of traits in Scala 3. Now, before I get on to explain what the differences are between Scala 3 and Scala 2, let me go uh, spend a couple of seconds to uh, tell you how you can create a Scala 3 project in IntelliJ. So this assumes that you have IntelliJ IDEA and I have here the Community Edition 2020.2, which has experimental support for Dottie, the uh, code name for what will become Scala 3. And if you want to create a Scala 3 project, you will go to File New Project. And then here on the left hand side, assuming that you have the Scala plugin installed, you can select Scala here on the left and then Dottie Experimental on the right. And then after you click next, you have the uh, already known wizard, which will create the appropriate project for you. So this is not really all that magical. All you have to do is select Scala and Dottie to create a Scala 3 project. Now, Scala traits were originally conceived to be analogous to Java interfaces. Essentially, a trait was a type definition which wrapped a suite of abstract fields and methods. So for example, a trait called, let's call this talker, with a method, let's say talk to another talker. And this returns a string, for example. So this is the essential definition of a trait. This is a type definition with a method definition, which is left abstract for whatever class ends up implemented this trait to also implement this method as well. Now, in time, traits acquired some additional functionality and features such as non-abstract fields and methods. So you can also define methods and fields which also have an implementation here on the right hand side. All right. Now, this led to some legitimate questions around the differences between traits and abstract classes, for which, uh, by the way, we also have another video in the Rock the JVM channel. And that line between traits and abstract classes will even get blurrier with the arrival of Scala 3. And one of the practical differences between abstract classes and traits was in Scala 2 that traits could not receive constructor arguments. Put simply, now they can in Scala 3. So if I define a trait talker, it was illegal to add constructor arguments to a trait, but here I will add a constructor argument. Let's call the subject as a string. And now this is legal code in Scala 3. Now, extending such a trait looks just like extending a regular class. So if I am to um, extend this trait in a class, let's call this person with a name, and um, this extends talker, this talker needs to receive the appropriate constructor argument. And let's assume that this talker talks about rock music. Now, of course, person is underlined in red because uh, the person class needs to override the talk to methods. So of course, if I define talk to and I just return the empty string, this is legal code in Scala 3. So extending a trait with a constructor argument is much the same as extending an abstract class with a constructor argument. So if I change from this trait to abstract class, this would not be any different at all. Now let me go ahead and move that back. So enhancing traits with arguments such as this certainly has its advantages. However, 
This may pose some problems. One of the fundamental differences between traits and classes is that you can mix in multiple traits in a uh, class definition. So the first problem with the first potential problem with a trait having a constructor arguments is that sometimes in large code bases and not only large code bases, uh, you can end up extending the same trait multiple times. So you can have some diamond shaped hierarchies in your data type hierarchies. And this is not unheard of. You can end up extending the same trait multiple times. But um, in this case, if you have a trait with a constructor argument, you may end up mixing this trait multiple times, but with different arguments, which was not a problem in Scala 2 because there was no constructor argument. So what happens if you mix in a trait with one argument in one place and another argument in another place? The short answer is that it won't compile. So um, let me define a small example. Let me define a class. Let's call this rock fan, which extends talker with rock music. And uh, let me define, actually, let me make this method non-abstract because I would then be forced to overwrite it all over the place. And uh, let me define another class. Let's call this rock fanatic, which extends uh, rock fan. And let me mix in this talker trait again with talker. And uh, let's assume that I pass another argument like heavy metal. Now, if I mix in the talker trait with two constructor arguments here, this is a compiler error. So how do you solve it? Well, you don't pass any constructor argument again. So if you have to mix in the talker trait again, you don't pass the constructor argument again. So no constructor argument in the second mix in. That is because the talker trait with one constructor argument has already been considered. And so all you have to do is uh, have the talker trait defined as is. And uh, that'll be it. Now, why would you do that in the first place, like mixing the talker trait twice? Well, you don't have to do this uh, in the style that I did it on screen. This was just an example, but you might end up mixing the same trait in complex hierarchy. So if you mix in two traits which happen to extend talker, you will end up mixing talker twice. And so you will have to take care that only one of them passes the constructor argument and the other does not. Okay. Good. So this was one problem. The second problem is what happens if we define a trait hierarchy? So if I define another trait that has another constructor argument, which tries to extend talker, what do we do here? Well, in this case, the answer is short as well. And then that is that derived traits will not pass constructor arguments to parent traits. Let me give an example here. So if I define a trait that I'm going to call broken record, this is uh, one of those expressions that define a, um, an endless talker. Um, so let's define a trait that's called this broken record, which extends talker. Now, the question is, what kind of constructor argument do you pass here? And the answer is that you don't pass the constructor argument at all. That is a rule. Passing arguments to parent traits will not compile. So this is what you would have to do if you are to extend a trait that has constructor arguments. You don't pass constructor arguments. Now, cool, but how are we supposed to mix in this trait into one of our classes later? Say we wanted to create a class which denotes this little person we have in our lives, either a friend or an uncle or uh, one of our uh, circle of friends who talks until they turn pale. So let me define a person who extends a broken record. And I'm going to define this as a class. Let's call this annoying friend that we all know and love, which extends broken record. And then what? How would we pass constructor arguments to the talker trait, which requires a constructor argument? Now, if we were to pass a constructor argument to broken record, like say politics here, this would not compile because the trade broken record does not have constructor arguments. So how do we pass the appropriate constructor argument to the talker trait? And the answer is that you have to mix it again. This is important. So you will need to mix in the talker trait again, and then you would need to pass in the constructor argument like politics even though the broken record trait also extends talker. So you have to mix in two talkers and one of them, 
this last one has the constructor argument. All right. This is pretty clunky, but this is the only way to make the type system sound with respect to this new capability of traits that they have constructor arguments. All right. So this is pretty important, and uh, this might sound a little bit counterintuitive. So take this away from this video. So this was one of the major subjects that I wanted to talk about in this video, which is uh, constructor arguments for traits. The second major subject that I want to talk about is super traits. And um, let me talk about the motivation for these super traits. So the Scala compiler's type inference is one of the most powerful features of the Scala compiler. However, without enough information, even this massive, massively powerful type inference system isn't powerful enough. And here's an example. Let me define a trait. Let's call this color. And I'm going to create some um, instances of color as case objects. So case object, let's call this red, which extends color, case object green extends color, and case object blue extends color. So I've defined some instances of color. Now I'm going to define a value, let's call this color, and I'm not going to uh, supplied with a type here. I'm going to let the type infer decide. And uh, on the right hand side of equals, I'm going to say if and then some condition, let's say 43 bigger than 2 or something like that. And um, I'm going to return red if the condition is true. Otherwise, I'm going to return blue. So another color. Now, without inspecting the type of this va value here, can you guess what the inferred type of color is? And spoiler, it's not color. So if you want to pause the video and try to figure it out, feel free. But um, this is pretty weird in the first place, even if I gave you the spoiler here, which is not color. If I hover over this uh, color variable here, we have color with product. And um, we would expect the inferred type to be the lowest common ancestor of the two types, red and blue. The complete inferred type is actually color with product with serializable. And uh, this was the inferred type in Scala 2. So if you were to write this expression, this line over here in Scala 2, this would be the inferred type from the Scala compiler. The reason is that both red and blue derive from color, but because they are case objects, they automatically implement the traits that are called product from Scala and serializable, which are which is an interface from Java. So you probably remember that case classes and case objects are all serializable. So the lowest common ancestor of these two types, red and blue, is color with product because they're case objects and serializable because they're all case objects. So this is the complete type from the type infer. But the thing is that we rarely use the traits product and serializable as standalone types that we attach to, ver to values. So we never say color colon product equals whatever, or color colon serializable equals whatever. We want the, the type infer to simply say color or something like that. But we want the type infer to attach the type color without us needing to specify it. All right. So we need to simply remove the type and somehow assume that the type infer can infer that this type reduces to color. Now, because these traits, product and serializable, are not really usable as standalone types that we attach to values, we want the type infer to simply ignore them. And uh, we can mark a trait as being ignorable by the type infer of Scala by marking it as a super trait. So here's an example. Assuming we have these definitions with a trait color and red, green, blue, and I'm also going to define another trait that I'm going to call paintable assuming we define some sort of library for graphics in Scala or something like that. And this paintable type is only useful for the API uh, derivation in our colors over here, but we never use the paintable type as standalone types for uh, the colors that we actually end up using. And so this paintable thing, if I mix in case object re extends color with paintable and I mix this trait 
all the time in my colors, the type infer will figure out that this color is color with paintable with product. Now, because we don't use paintable as much, we may mark it as suppressible by the type infer by marking it with a keyword super. So when you say super trait printable, this trait is being ignored in the type infer. And if I hover over this uh, value again, notice that paintable has disappeared uh, in the uh, type that the type infer has attached to this value. So you can mark a trait as being ignorable by the type infer by marking it with super. Now, some examples of traits that will be automatically marked as super traits or treated as super traits by the Scala compiler are Scala product, product, which is not the case right now because I'm using a pre-release version of Scala, but when Scala 3 comes out, the Scala product will be uh, treated as a super trait. Scala, uh, Java lang comparable, which is very popular in the Java ecosystem, and Java lang serializable, which I'm pretty sure you saw that was already suppressed in the definition of this color. So serializable is already marked as a super trait at the release of Dottie that I'm working with right now, but when Scala 3 comes out, all of these uh, traits and interfaces will be marked as super traits. So the type infer will only uh, reduce the type to what is probably going to be used in your actual code. So there you have it folks, you've learned two major features that Skull 3 has added regarding traits. I hope you liked this video, if you liked it, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe for more videos like this on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for fresh updates on upcoming material. As always, I'm dying for feedback, so please leave your comments attached to this video, and uh, check out the Rock the JVM website, we have tons of content like this. Until next time, I'm Daniel, signing off.